A blessed Lenten Monday, dear friends. This is Sister Laura of the Daughters of St. Paul for today's Gospel Power. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow of Sarephat in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. God plays no favorites. God's prophets of old, particularly Elijah and Elisha, have given proof of this by being instruments in delivering God's favor to foreigners, to the widow of Zarephath, and to Naaman, the Syrian leper. Prophets are unpopular and unaccepted in their hometowns because they do not conform to the expectations of their own people. As Jesus proclaims God's universal paternity and saving will, in the synagogue of his hometown Nazareth, he too gets rejected. For his own people, think of Yahweh as a national God committed only to Israel. Jesus dares them to think big, to move beyond their narrow mindset, which is what metanoia or conversion means. But they harden their hearts, and become violent and murderous. The shadow of the cross looms darkly over this episode as Jesus meets opposition for revealing that God is bigger than what his own people dare to imagine. Lord Jesus, help us understand that since God loves each of us infinitely, no one can claim to be favorite. Rather, all of us are unique and special in God's sight. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you have full knowledge of every person, of our national problems and their causes, and you know the longings of our hearts. Lord, in the coming election, help us know and examine the track record and qualifications of candidates. Enlighten us to elect the right public servants to address our national problems and may they invite public participation in the process. Lord, in the face of election anomalies like vote buying and the use of government funds to campaign, enable us to speak out the truth and act accordingly as upright citizens and practicing Christians, so we can witness in words and actions the faith of 500 years you have gifted to our country. Amen. Amen. 